Welcome to Permission to Shift, the show that helps you remove limits, transform fear, and create a life you're excited to live. This guest is Caleb Moran. He's the number one best-selling author, coach, and international speaker. From one-to-one -one sessions to speaking on stage in front of thousands, his simple yet charismatic approach to leadership, business, and the Bible has captivated audiences for decades. Often referred to as the entrepreneur's midwife, he is passionate about helping people give birth to their entrepreneurial dreams. As founder and CEO of The 400 Company, Caleb works with elite companies and executive leadership around the globe, helping scale individuals, leaders, and organizations to operate at new levels. It is a great pleasure to welcome Caleb to the show today. Thank you so much for coming in today, Caleb. It is awesome to see you again. My pleasure. Absolutely thrilled to be a part of what you're doing. Oh, thank you so much. For those people who are out there listening to this and they had they weren't on our summit together, can you really quickly give them an overview of what it is you do and and how you help people? Sure, yeah. There? Absolutely. Yeah. So I work primarily in the coaching space uh, with entrepreneurs. Everything from coaching, consulting, marketing. Um, it I've been coaching for almost 20 years. And from being in a faith-based area to also being in the corporate area, I've seen every gambit of, uh, I guess, people group, so to say. And everybody, no matter what, is touched by the same issue of time. And I think sometimes we, we deal with time management. And time management sometimes is, is a false belief because it's more about priority management than it is just time management. And so what I do is I help entrepreneurs either starting or scaling their business uh, really learn how to balance both business and life. And that's the hard part. You know, I'm a father of five. And so my wife and I've been married almost 20 years, um, having five kids and all different ages, all the things that they do. I, I coach their sports teams. Um, I run a couple of businesses we travel the world and we speak at conferences and still trying to find time to jump in the gym, read a book, go on a date, right? All those things you're juggling, it seems, until you learn how to fully manage your calendar. So that's what I help people do. I jump in and I rescue entrepreneurs from uh, utter despair and destruction of life. <laughs> by just wanting to pull their hair out and give up. And, you know, as comical as it sounds, uh, when we jump into things like this with people, we're saving marriages. We're, we're saving businesses. We're saving uh, passions. We're saving uh, families. And I've seen it all. I mean, I've had, I've sat across the table or across the computer from entrepreneurs or CEOs, executive level leaders who say, man, my business is doing great, but my marriage is failing. You know, my business is doing great, but my kids resent me or my marriage is OK, but my business is failing. And we help them with the day to day routines so that they can find success in those areas. And it's working hands down. It's working every time. So where do people start? Where do you start? I come to you, say, and I'm an, I'm a crazy entrepreneur and I've got kids and I've got how many businesses and I'm running a YouTube series and all yeah. the other stuff that I'm doing. Where do you start with people like me? Yeah, it's a great question. I, I think each person, the conversation kind of organically evolves. But when you get down to the brass tacks of it, there's really five steps that we go over in the book that if we can nail these five steps, we're going to get you to the place of underwhelming a seemingly overwhelming life, right? And so ultimately, it, it's... It's these steps. First thing you've got to do is you've got to determine what are my priorities. And when I say that, you have to know that a lot of times what most people do is they make a to-do list and then they prioritize it. That's not what we're talking about, right? <laughs> that is not, I hate to-do list. I think that they serve a purpose. But in, in taking control of your life, the to-do list is going to be the wrong foot forward. 
because what you're doing is you know all the things you need to do. And so you're just trying to say, well, let me see how many I can knock out today. And whatever doesn't get done rolls over into tomorrow. And what that is, is a procrastinated uh, approach that is just adding more stress, adding more anxiety. Uh, it's just constantly telling you that you're not good enough. You're not doing enough. So what we do is we determine what is priorities and priorities are different than responsibilities. And this is where you really got to search your soul. This is where you really got to look at your life and say, what do I want to spend my time doing? Not what do I need to spend my time doing? So I always mm -hmm. tell a client, let's just clear your mind. Let's forget everything that exists. You know, like, yes, you have to pick up the kids from school. And, and yes, you've got to walk the dog and check the mail and go grocery shopping and cook dinner. And we, we know the dry cleaning's got to be picked up and all of those. Let's just wipe it away. If you could choose one week, just one week, what would you want to do in that week? And so for me, and just to kind of give you a little quick story of, of my life, um, my five kids, I've got four boys and a girl. I had three boys and we tried for a girl and we had a boy girl twin. So it, it took five kids to finally get that girl. Right. <laughs> so, but, um, I love my kids. I'm very much a, a present father. Uh, but if you read the book, you'll see in the first chapter, I really bear my soul on a season of my life where I was, I was just, I was working and working and working and working. And there wasn't much to show for it other than my bills were paid. My, my marriage, uh, I have a good marriage, but at that time there was, there was just, it was agitated waters, right? I, I, I'm a great father, but I was presently absent in their life. You know, as an entrepreneur, most entrepreneurs work from home and, and I, I needed my family to pretend I wasn't home. If that makes sense. And any entrepreneur knows exactly what I'm talking about. Like I'm here, but pretend I'm not here. Don't talk to me. Don't make loud noises. Don't walk in front of or behind my computer screen, right? Because I'm either on a Zoom call or I'm talking with a client. Or I'm trying to knock out this, this project. And so long story short, my youngest son was diagnosed with leukemia. And when we went in and found out, it was such a rush decision that they had to make that they had to put him in a medically induced coma. And we were told on Monday, he wouldn't make it to Friday. So here I am looking at my son who can't interact with me. I can't speak to him and he talked back. I can't look at him and he looked back. I don't even know if he hears what I'm saying. And I'm not thinking about the next four days that I have with him. I'm reflecting on the past three years that I had with him. And at that time, he's three years old and you're watching your three-year-old son hooked up to 18 different machines. And I'm asking myself, did I make him a priority? And I wish I could tell you absolutely yes, but the answer is no. Because in my mind, I was grinding and grinding and grinding for the life that I wanted to give him. That I had taken myself out of the life that he currently was living. And again, I coached his, his teams and, and, and I took him to the park and I played. But when you're told you're not going to have it anymore, or there's a fear that you may not have it anymore, you really begin to reflect differently. And I realized um, at that moment, I didn't care who was at the office. I didn't care if the bills were being paid at home or at work. I didn't care what staff member had met the deadline on the project that we were on. I didn't, I didn't care about any of those things. All I cared about was, is my son going to make it to Friday? And when he gets out of this coma, and when we walk this journey of leukemia, I care about those days. I care about how present I am in those moments. And so I begin to make a list of priorities. And my priorities uh, might be different than other people, but my family is a priority. My marriage is a priority. Um, you know, my health is a priority. And that, that means my mental and my physical health. You know, my my spirituality, my relationship with, with God or, or whatever, somebody else, you know, whether they're spiritual or not, for me, my relationship with God was a priority. So I had these, these priorities that I had to list. And that was my first step was what means the most to me, 
because what matters the most needs to get the most of me, right? So if you're watching this, you got to ask yourself, what matters the most to you should be getting the most of you. I can't look my wife in the eye and say, you matter to me, but I'm not going to talk to you for the next four weeks, right? I can't look at my, my kids and say, daddy loves you, but you're never going to hear it from me because I'm so busy with all my clients and all my work and all these projects. So what you're going to see of me is the frustration that I need you to be quiet. I need you to stop talking to me. I need you to leave me alone for a little bit. And I had to reevaluate priorities. And so step one is determine what is a priority. And then in step two, and you can interrupt me at any time if you want me to elaborate. No, this, on anything, is, but this is exactly what people need to hear. It's perfect. perfect. So once you identify what they are, then the second thing you have to do is you got to lock them in. And so they get a place in your week. And so this book is about five steps to a productive week. That week will predict your month. It will, it will uh, set the trend of the quarter and it'll ultimately prophesy that whole year. And I truly believe that your success is found in your daily routine. And so if you're not successful in your marriage, it's not in your daily routine. If you're not successful in parenting your children, and, and I understand not everyone is a, is a spouse or a parent, but either way, this is how I came to this. If I'm not successful in, in my parenting, it's not in my daily routine. If I'm not successful in my health, mental health, physical health, it's not in my daily routine. Yeah. Personal growth. I, one of the first things that I help my clients do is we develop a personal growth plan. Most people don't have a plan to grow. And so we create a personal growth plan. And that's one of my priorities. So, you know, my, my marriage, my family, my, my spirituality, my relationship with God, uh, my health, and then my personal growth. Those are my five priorities. And so I've got to now say, how will I make my marriage a priority in my calendar? Because it's one thing to have this epiphany that my marriage needs to be a priority. But the next thing is how, how are you going to do that? And the how is asking yourself, how will I do that by putting it in my calendar? And so for me, uh, that might look something like this. I have a date night with my wife every Thursday. Every Thursday. There's not a Thursday that's going to go by that I'm not on a date with my wife. The only way that we might not date on Thursday is if something came up that required it, you know, maybe a funeral, uh, maybe it, sometimes it's just curveballs, right? Mm -hmm. But you, and you'll see this in the book, you, you cannot, you've got to make your calendar, your authority. It's got to be the, the new boss in your life. But if I told my boss, I would be there at 6 PM on Thursday night for dinner with them. I'm not going to cancel because, you know, I just didn't feel like it. I'm just tired. It's been a busy day. No, I'm going I'm, 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 I'm to be there. My calendar is my authority. So if, if that event for a priority, I never, ever cancel priorities. I can cancel responsibility and we'll get to that, but I, I can cancel responsibility anytime. But the only thing I can do with a priority is reschedule. And I don't push it way further in the future. I'll just rearrange my week. So like, for instance, my wife and I last week, we had a situation come up where we needed to move our date night. We didn't cancel it, we moved it. So instead of having date night on Thursday, we moved it to a Tuesday because why my wife is a priority. And when a husband can show his wife or when a spouse can show the other spouse that you're a priority, you talk about security in that relationship. It, it's, it just, it does wonders to uh, that marriage or, or whatever the relationship is because you're saying you matter more than the chaos that's surrounding me. And, and if I can focus, moms are really good at nurturing and being maternal to so many different areas of their life that they'll be cooking dinner and they'll stop dinner to turn and, and tend to a child who maybe fell and scraped their knee, or they'll answer the phone for a friend who's having a bad day. And, and while that's great, they're being pulled in a thousand different directions 
that you're just spinning a lot of plates and not getting anything done. So when you identify that priority and you lock it in by giving it a time, now you've actually begin to cultivate that priority where it's getting what it needs to grow, to sustain, to, to, to increase, multiply, whatever. So I had a guy tell me one day, he said, you know, um, I really want, this was a client of mine. He said, I really want to make God a priority in my life. And so I said, you know, that sounds great. It sounds great, but tell me how you're going to do that. And he goes, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I just, I just think that I need it. I said, you know, there's a lot of things that we can think we need, but until we put application in, it's just not going to work. And so this example I'm, I'm about to give you, it's not just for people who want a closer relationship with God. This happens in any category. If it's making your marriage a priority, if it's making your, um, you know, your, your family time a priority. So what I asked him to do was I said, what is having a better relationship with God look like? He said, well, I think I would need to go to church. And I said, okay, all right. Well, if you're going to go to church, then where's your church? When do they have church services? Let's get real practical here. And he said, you know, they, they have three different options. And I said, well, which one better fits your family's needs? He said, the 11 o'clock. I said, okay, are you going to commit to doing this weekly? Are you doing this monthly? Are you going to church twice a year? You know, what are you doing? He said, you know, I want to go weekly. I said, all right. So how you make God a priority is you're going to go every Sunday at 11 a.m. You're going to put it in your calendar right now. And then you're going to set two alarms or alerts that tell you how far away is that church? It's about a 20 minute drive. I said, all right, so you're going to need a, a 30 minute reminder. Right. So that it prompts you start getting the kids in the car and let's get on the way. And you might need an hour reminder, something that reminds you an hour before and 30 minutes before. And then he started saying, you know, I think I want to wake up on, on during the week. And I, I think I want to pray. I want to, I want to spend time in prayer or meditation. And then I, I want to do that. I said, all right, is this five days a week? He said, no, I think I'll do Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And I think I'll do 6 a.m. And so we scheduled it right then. And we set alarms and alerts in his phone. So right off the bat, that priority had, had already given him four places in his week where he was making it a priority. And then he found out that there was a, a businessmen's Bible study in his community on Tuesday. So now he had Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, that all of a sudden he had this priority in his calendar. We moved from that to his marriage was a priority. And I heard someone say this a long time ago. They said, you know, they said a healthy marriage needs to go off what's called the 777 model. And I was like, I want to know what the 777 model is. And they said, well, every seven days, a date night, every seven weeks, a getaway, and every seven months, a vacation. And I thought, Ooh. man, that would be amazing. And so for me and my wife, we started doing that. We said, okay, every seven days, every Thursday, we're going on a date. Let's jump seven weeks ahead. And let's, you know, we live in, in Louisiana. So New Orleans is about two hours from us. So about every seven weeks, we'll jump down to New Orleans, get a hotel, spend the night, eat a couple of cool restaurants and come right back home. Right. It wasn't a big getaway, but it was just a weekend, a night away. And then every seven uh, months, we'll go on maybe a four or five day vacation, just her and I. So that requires planning, financial planning. That requires babysitting planning. I got to let the grandmas know ahead of time so they can give me all the excuses why they can't watch my kids, you know? And, and so I got I got I got seven months to woo them and manipulate them. And, but all of those things going through step one gets you to step two to say, okay, it's not enough that I have a priority, but I've got to lock it into my calendar. And then step three is now, what are all the other things that I have to do in, in my life? Because I can't just pay my bills by dating my wife. That's going to cost me money, right? I can't pay my bills by having a family night with my kids. That's going to cost me money. And, and just waking up and, and going to the gym for my physical health is not going to pay my bills. So these are priorities. And usually what happens with priorities is when you don't do what we're talking about right now, Priorities get choked out by responsibilities. How many times have you heard, you know, uh, a couple say, maybe it's you who said it, 
man, I would love to go on a date night, but we've just been so busy. And I would love to go, you know, take the kids on a vacation, but we've just got so much going on. And it's like, man, I would love to just, you know, go out with friends, but where is the time for that? Right. It's like, we have these things we want, but we're in this like Bermuda triangle of, of just, we're lost. We didn't know how we got here, but there's never any time for me. I'd love to get in shape, but I don't have the time for it. Right. I've got all these things going on. And so what we do is we kill that by saying all that busy stuff is going to happen, but not at the expense of the things that matter most. So step one, you get your priorities straight. You identify them. Step two, you lock them in by scheduling them into your calendar, into your week. Step three is now you list out all those responsibilities. I sat down with a client of mine. She's a mom. Uh, she's an entrepreneur. And we listed out on my whiteboard. I'm looking at my whiteboard right now in front of me. We listed out on my whiteboard. I actually ran out of space. And as after we got done counting, we were at like 280 responsibilities. Whoa. And I'm going, no wonder <sighs> you're not getting things done. So we listed them all out. Yeah, it was a lot. <laughs> this was weekly. This wasn't just like monthly. This was like stuff they had to do weekly. Was she burnt out? Oh my goodness. Yeah. And that's usually what happens. I get people when they're, they're like one nostril above water, can't even mm. yell for help. They're drowning. And I, and I'm, that's the rescuing side of what we do. And so we listed it all out and I said, all right, now we're going to categorize these things. So you make a long list. Step three, you make that list of, of your responsibilities and start categorizing these things. What are the things that I do for you know, my household? What are the things that I do for work? What are the things that I have to do for me? What are the things I have to do for my spouse or, or whatever, right? There's a million different things that you could do. Many start asking yourself, what do I not have to do? I mean, if we're really looking at your life is on the line here, your, you know, your sanity is on the line here. And so we figured out like, hey, look, you, know, you don't have to do laundry every day. That's just what you think you have to do. What if you you know, maybe got a little wiser with your time and said, maybe laundry is three days a week and I'll, I'll have to be okay with it piling up over here. Or, hey, maybe I don't have the time anymore to clean my house. And so I'm going to hire that out. So what can I delegate? What can I eliminate from, from my responsibility and give to someone else? Or, hey, what can I train my, my teenager to do now? Maybe they can cut the grass for me. Maybe, maybe uh, you know, so-and-so can, can grocery shop for me. And there's a lot of different things that you can do, but once you've listed out all those prior or those responsibilities, now after you've categorized and figured out what are the things that I must do, now you can say step four is now I've got to fill in all the available time slots that are there. And if you're really honest with yourself, there's some things you can't control. Like if you work a nine to five job, sometimes you can't control that time. It just is what it is, but there's a lot that you can control and maybe you can move things around. And in the book, we talk about, uh, you know, my secret move, which is front loading my weeks. Uh, my work week is um, very heavy on Monday, less heavy on Tuesday. If you picture kind of like a ski slope to where by the time I hit Thursday, when I go on a date with my wife, she's getting, you know, like 95% of me rather than the leftover 5% of me that the 95% of work took from me. And so I put what matters most towards the end of my week. And then I, I, and my career is a priority. I have to provide for my family. So that's one of the things that are listed as a priority, but I slope down to where I'm, I mean, I'm just having a blast by the weekend, not a, not a care in this world. And that also gives me the ability to move things if I need to. If I had mm. something over here on a Tuesday and something got, man, I could throw it over here to a Friday because I've got so much time on my hands. And so we fill in all those available time slots. Did you ever watch that movie, uh, Scarface? Have you ever seen that movie, Scarface? I want to say yes. That was a Batman movie, was it not? No, 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 no. no. That's, uh, what is that? That's another one. That's some other face. This is with, uh, you know, the, the say hello to my little friend, you know, and he's shooting, you know, talking <laughs> about, you know yes, no, I don't watch okay. violent mafia movies. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> well, at least everybody has, has heard of yeah. that movie, right? 
I think Tony Montana is the character's name. And I've seen bits and pieces of it throughout the years. But in the analogy of step four, you've got to almost think about that. Tony Montana, you know, all these guys are coming into his mansion and he just pulls out this like massive gun. I think it's got like grenade launchers on it. And he has this infamous phrase, say hello to my little friend. And he starts shooting everything in his line of sight. I mean, he's hitting paintings and walls and doors and floors and banisters and people. And it's a, it's a, I don't condone the violence of the movie by any means, but that's the mindset you almost have to take with your responsibilities where you say, okay, everything I've got, to, I've got to put it in this gun and I've got to look at my calendar. And if I've got an available time slot, so if I'm reading a book for, for growth and development from 6 a.m. till 7 a.m. And then, you know, I've got to do some, some bill paying or I've got to look over my finances, but I leave the house, you know, at eight o'clock to take the kids to school. This time slot right here, what could I put there? Maybe I could, I could pay the bills. Maybe, maybe I could make the grocery list. Maybe I could do these things. So you just start putting those responsibilities in every available time slot and you leave no stone unturned to where now your week is so structured and so organized. Some people will look at that as, oh my God, this, this is giving me anxiety that it's like I'm in prison, that I'm a slave to my calendar. And it's not that way at all. What it is, it's, it's giving you the time to make sure those things are getting done. I have times in my calendar, and this is a whole nother topic, but I have a time in my calendar that says dreaming sessions. I just sit down and I dream. I, I dream during the day. This is not while I'm sleeping. I will literally dream about the future that I want. And I see myself living that future. I see myself like right now, like uh, this Thursday, I'm going to flight training to fly a plane to learn, get my pilot's license. This is something I've been dreaming about for years. And what I started doing, when I say dreaming about back then, it was like, I just wanted to do it. It was a desire. But in the past year, I got so intentional that I actually intentionally dreamed about it. And now, boom, it just happened. It's like what I saw myself doing, I'm now doing. My wife and I, we have dreaming sessions every week where I'll say, hey, look, here's my focus on dreaming. We want a new house, right? Or we want to do this. Let's just see ourselves, whatever that looks like. Then I'll go back and I'll say, what are the things that are stopping me from getting there? And I'll start eliminating those from my life. If I, if I need more money and I'm spending too much, well, quit spending so much money and start saving, right? And so you've got to get to a point to where you've filled your calendar with the things that need to get done and the things that you want to get done. And step five is the ultimate life changer. And that's what we call nickel and diming our time. And after you've developed your priority list, you know what they are, you have locked it in by scheduling it. You've made a list of all your responsibilities, categorized it, got rid of whatever you can, delegated it to something else automated it to an app or whatever you can do. And then you filled in all the available time slots by making sure nothing was left out, right? You, we call it list it or miss it, right? You, you don't want to miss out on anything. Then we learn how to nickel and dime our time. And the best way I can explain this to you is, you know, when I was a child and the ice cream truck, I'd be out on my bike riding in the neighborhood and I'd hear the music on the ice cream truck playing. I would freak out like, I'm in a mad panic. I'm, I'm pedaling back home. I'm, I'm running inside yelling, you know, my dad worked. And so he was always at work, but my mom was at the house. So I'm like, mama, mama, mom, you know, ice cream trucks down the road. I need some money. And she would always tell me, go find my purse. Her purse was never in the same spot. <laughs> so I'm, I'm like, where's your purse? I don't know, son. You know, and I feel like I have seconds before I miss out on this, this dream of mine, this goal of mine of getting ice cream. And so I'm running to the kitchen. It's not there. I'm running to the bedroom. It's not there. I'm running to the bathroom. It's not there. It's in the car. So I'm finally, I'm, I'm pulling, you know, things out of the purse and I'm looking for a nickel, a dime and every nickel and every dime that I found, it was like gold to me because it was getting me one step closer to that goal, which was ice cream. 
<laughs> right now I'm, I'm finding nickels and dimes in junk drawers and couch cushions, right? The same way that I'm looking for nickels and dimes financially to reach a goal is the same way I look for nickels and dimes in my day, a nickel being five minutes here, a dime being 10 minutes here that I can find and capture and redirect those towards a priority, not a responsibility. What you're going to find in, in calendar hacking, it's all about what matters most, not what busies my time in my day. And so example, I'm a coach. I was meeting a client for coffee. And so I pulled up 20 minutes early. I looked at my calendar to just make sure I knew what was coming up after that meeting. And I got there like 11 o'clock, I think, uh, or like 1140. And it was a 12 o'clock uh, meeting. And so I noticed from 12 to one on my calendar, I had it blocked off for them. But at 1.30, I had something else. So immediately I knew if I'm not careful, I can let this client's time bleed into that 30 minutes. And usually people go, hey, that's fine. We got extra time. We can just bleed in and, and we, can, we can talk more if we need to. But I realized that was three dimes, right? That if I'm, if I'm trying to not be the person who says, I don't have time for this anymore. I don't, there's not enough time in the day, right? Everyone says those phrases. I just found three dimes. What am I going to do with that? Am I going to just let it just be wasted? Or am I going to invest it? So I text my wife real quick and I said, hey, babe, what are you doing? She said, oh, I'm getting ready to leave the house. I'm running a few errands and I'm going to get my nails done. I said, oh, OK, what time are you getting your nails done? She said, my appointment is at one o'clock. And I looked and my appointment was ending at one o'clock. But I had another one at one thirty. I said, where are you going to be getting your nails done? And it was right around the corner from where I was getting I was having coffee with this client. And so I said, all right, well, have fun. Love you. And so what I did was I walked into my meeting and I shook hands with my client and I immediately let them know, I value your time, but this is what time is allotted. So I said, hey, it's so good to see you today. Hey, listen, before we get started, I just want to let you know, I value your time and I want to make sure you get everything you need from this session today. And so I want to go ahead and just jump right into it because I have to get up from here at one o'clock and I've got to go to another appointment. So they knew there's a boundary right here. And so we jumped right in it. We talked. I got up from, from the uh, client after an hour, shook their hand, went to the uh, barista, ordered my wife's favorite drink and got me another drink. And I walked into the nail salon and I surprised her. And you would have thought I gave her a million dollars. She was grinning from ear to ear. She said, what are you doing? And I told her, I said, you know what? I found an extra 30 minutes in my day. And I just wanted to spend it with you. And so I brought you your coffee. I sat down beside her and the ladies in the oh, yeah. oh my God, they're like, <laughs> my husband, my husband would never do that. And then one lady said, much less, he don't even know what my favorite drink is. Oh, no. so my wife felt like a queen, which she is, but she felt like a queen because she felt like she was a priority. Yeah. I got up from there and I got in the car and I went to my other meeting. And you know what? Those investments into my marriage have given me the best ROI, right? That return on investment. And a lot of times what's depleted in our life is because we're not putting enough into it, right? You can't make a withdrawal that has not had a deposit. And so that's just a quick example of finding five minutes here, 10 minutes there. Another thing that I do with nickel and diming my time is... I might have a commute from my house to my office or to work. Maybe it's a 15 minute commute. Well, instead of just getting in my car and driving, I'll, I'll take that 15 minutes and turn it into uh, an opportunity to grow. You know, if personal growth is a, a priority of mine, then that 15 minutes is where I listen to a podcast. That 15 minutes is where I put in an audio book. And then I've learned to multiply time to kill two birds with one stone by you know, if I'm running on the treadmill at, at the gym because my physical health is a priority, why not have my AirPods in and listening to an audio, doing personal growth and physical health at the same time? 
And so you begin to look at your calendar differently. You begin to look at your days differently because now you're not saying, where did the time go? Now you're saying, where's the time that I can capture? I've got 15 minutes here. What am I going to do with it? And that 15 minutes might be like I've put in my calendar before, do nothing, like (laughs) stare at a wall, right? Like go outside and look for birds, you know, anything (laughs) that lowers my stress level, right? So it's not about busying your day. It's, it's managing and prioritizing and doing what's best for you. I have in my calendar, it says free time. I have, I mean, my wife has in her calendar nap. <laughs> you know, she's like with five kids, she's like this, this is where I'm napping. And that's fine. But you'll never be able to, to grab a hold of something that you're not looking for. Mm. So if you can learn your priorities, list them determine them, identify them, lock them in by scheduling them, list all your responsibilities, fill every available time slot, and then learn how to nickel and dime your time. Really, another word for nickel and diming your time would be milking your day for all that it's worth, right? That there's not a minute that went by that you didn't, you didn't grab intentionally and do something with it. If you can do that and do that for one week, that will be the most productive week of your life. Live it, do it, set a schedule, live it for a week, even if it kills you. And then go back and evaluate. Was that week hard? Did I, did I put too much, you know, did I expect too much out of myself? Should I back it off a little bit? Or, hey, was it kind of too easy? And I didn't go hard enough. And then after you do that for a week and tweak it, do another week and tweak it, do another week. By that time, you've really got a good evaluation of what you need to do then set that as a 12 week pattern and live it. Cause look, 21 days can make or break a habit, but 90 days can develop a lifestyle. So 90 days of waking up and reading, bettering yourself, maybe going to the gym, maybe taking some personal time, some, some rest time, going on dates, having a social life, whatever you need, living that for 90 days of priorities I promise you, you'll turn and you'll take a snapshot of a before picture and now look at a snapshot of the after picture and your life will be transformational, guaranteed every time. Your life will be what you desire it to be instead of how did I end up in this place? What am I going to do to get better? And that's going to help you. Those five steps will transform your life. I really love what you said about intentional use of your time. Because at the end of the day, if I was talking to two people and I said, how was your day? And one said busy and one said intentional, yep. you know who yep. I want to talk to? <laughs> That's right. That's right. It's That's right. Beautiful. And I have to say, kudos to you and your book. I have done the front stacking on my week. Come on. And the difference, I now have probably five times as much in my week as I did before. And I have and, more spare yeah. time than I did before. How and that's that the work? crazy part. I know. And people say that it, it's as if you've added time to your day and, and it is possible. It really is possible. You can spend time or you can invest time and things that, that you're spending time on are too expensive for your life. When you invest mm. on things, you get a return on that investment that just thrusts your life in a different direction, right? If all we did was spend our money and never invested it, Where's the future in that? Where, where's the provision in the future for that? That's why we have mutual funds and IRAs and, and you know, stocks and all the things that we do to put money in for the future us, right? Mm-hmm. So you got to think about the future you in the present you so that you've got something worth living for. Caleb, you have a few really cool things happening. And I know we're going to be talking about those more. Sure. I, I will be bringing you back. But one of those is a really cool app. Can you tell people really quickly about that app? Absolutely. Yeah. So every time I do calendar hacking, because I, I, you know, we've got the book calendar hacking, but I also offer a calendar hacking, one-on-one coaching and even group coaching. And every time without fail, there's always somebody that says, all of this makes sense and it sounds great, but I want somebody to do it for me. You know, it's almost like they, they just don't want to do it. Well, hey, we've got it. The app is coming out, the calendar hacking app. This is the coolest app ever. 
And matter of fact, I had three different companies that I was competing with and, and pitching it to. And I went with the one that literally came back to me and said, we'll do whatever it takes to work with you because this has never been done. We want to be the company that's, that's done that we've never heard of this. And what it does is not only does it walk you through the five steps, it helps you identify your priorities. It helps you lock them in and schedule them. It gives you the ability to make the long list of responsibilities. But one of the coolest things that it will do that nickel and dime that we talked about, we have this thing that's called um, the white space hunter and it will hunt down white space in your calendar. And what white space is, is what? if you've ever used like an app on your iPhone or your Android, you know, you, you schedule that block and it has like a color and then you yep. schedule, you know, 12 to one and then two to four, that white space in between is unallotted time. It'll hunt it down and it'll actually tell you, Hey, you know, on Sunday nights, it will send you an alert for forecasting your week. And it'll say, Hey, look, you, you've got 16 hours of unallotted time. What do you want to do with it? And then it'll even tell you, we noticed you haven't done this priority lately. You didn't go on the date with your wife. Would you like to schedule a date with your wife? And so it, it just helps you schedule it. And then we've got it to where there's individual, then there's a family plan to where, let's just say I want to schedule dinner with my family, but I've got you know kids at all different ages, different seasons of life. Maybe they're married and they're out on their own and it will send them and say, hey, your dad wants to have family dinner but this conflicts with your schedule. So if all the family's on the app, then it will come back to me and say, hey, your son can't, but you know what? We're going to ask him to move his time. Is this important? And it rearranges your schedule for you and everyone's able to line up at the same time. So the calendar hacking app is coming out. We are, we are almost finished with designs. And so I would say it should be out by January probably. So stay tuned for that. That's going to be a really cool app for people. And if you need any testers, I, I just want to put it out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got it. Yeah, I, I and mean, we probably will for sure. Just, I, I really feel that that app is going to change lives. Absolutely, and that's that's what we hope. We want people to be able to get their life back, and your life is lived every day. And so, if we can help you take care of those days, then it's going to help you take care of that life. Caleb, it has been amazing having you. For those of you watching this right now, you want to reach Caleb. He has a website. Your website is your name. Calendar. Well, you can find me anywhere if you type in my name, but the website for calendar hacking is calendarhackingbook.com. Then, of course, you can follow me on social media, Caleb W. Moran, or even my company, which is the 400 company. You can find us on any social media platform. And do you still offer that 20 minute complimentary Absolutely. consultation? Absolutely. Yeah, that's going right now. It's actually in the book. And then once the app launches, we'll be changing the book a little bit because in the back of the book, we offer some just some helpful resources, different things that you can use to you know automate your calendar. But once the app releases, we're just going to push the app for people to help them. And then we'll probably be changing that offer to something a little different. So get the 20 minute phone call with me while you can. Yeah. And uh, I will speak to you personally. We'll sit down. We'll talk about what you need. If I can help coach you through it right there for free, great. But if I can, you know, offer you a uh, calendar hacking coaching, you can jump in a group or you can just do one-on-one, -on -one. whatever we can do to help you. We will definitely put our best foot forward to help you. Caleb, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank it's you. It's an honor. Yes, ma'am.